Welcome once again to our Bible study here at uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. Glad you're joining me today. We continue in our Easter celebration. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. But uh, also in 1 Peter, uh, we're doing uh, living, the living epistle. That's what I'm labeling it because Peter uses the word living so often. And I love the word living just because, uh, especially spring here, Christ risen uh, that God is actively working. God is actively working in our lives. And to me, that's something worth, worth celebrating. So uh, we're going to, you know, God rescuing us uh, through his word and how we can, you know, in turn share that living word of God with others. Uh, so we have a living hope, a living and abiding word, and living righteously. Um, so we continue on in this theme. Now, uh, as we uh, get ready to get started for our study, let's have a prayer. We're going to continue to use the resurrection of our Lord. And we pray. O risen Christ, on Easter morning you rose from the dead. Today you wipe away our tears with victory over sin and death. You forgive our sins and give us eternal life in the breaking of the bread at your altar. You give us peace and wipe away our fears and doubts. You open your scripture and give us saving faith. We rejoice that you have made us your Easter people. In your holy name we pray. Alleluia. Amen. It's also nice to have the alleluias back, right? During Lent, uh, we omitted those, uh, more of a solemn time. Uh, but now we have those back and we can proclaim those uh, loud and clear. So, First Peter chapter 2, we get uh, started right away. Uh, like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Um, do we ever outgrow our need for the mother's milk of the gospel? You know, the answer, of course, is no. <laughs> and uh, really simply, uh, the gospel, that living and abiding word of God is so key for us in our lives. And what I really treasure is those who have been a part of, you know, the faith community for a long time. You know, baptized, confirmed, or in the church, they're, the, they're your senior members, and, and they have a hunger and thirst for God's word. And uh, when you know that someone who is older has it, you should take, pay close attention to that, right? Uh, you know that it's significant. And so St. Paul wrote, Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. That being the case, we should never tire of hearing the basic story of salvation. It is at the heart of our faith, Christ crucified and risen. Uh, I've heard, <laughs> and I've heard pastors talk about at times, you know, in terms of preaching, uh, not preaching uh, Christ crucified and risen, or not saying it so distinctly. You know, trying to be creative in all matters, you know, because it gets tiresome, it gets boring, it gets whatever for people. And I, I beg to differ. Um, in a world in which we try to complicate things and make things. Um, you know, more difficult than they need to be, why not just simply say it? Yeah, we can add a story of restoration of something and, and uh, you know, how, how uh, something was precious and, and was found and, and tie that to God's work in Jesus, but nothing will ever parallel how great Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was for us, how significant it is. Um, so this is one of those times where analogies and trying to be overly complicated in our message, I think, loses its, its meaning. It loses its meaning. Uh, now, maybe for the mature Christian, you know, can dabble in that, but everybody just needs to hear the basic message of salvation, Christ for you, death and resurrection. Uh, by it, you may grow up to salvation. Uh, we need to continue to apply the message of Christ to our Christian discipleship. We are not easily swayed by false doctrine and teachers when we grow up. Um, and this is simply to understand that we're going to face challenges in our lives by which our faith, you know, is going to, you know, be, be challenged. Um, you know, when we're sick, when we have uh, relationship troubles, uh, with the state of the world, we might say, what is God doing and is God still around? And when we grow up in our salvation, we are confident, we are at peace. Uh, in, in our forgiveness, we're at peace, that God is in control, God knows us, God knows everything, and he is working out everything for our good. And that's what growing up is all about. Um, you have a better understanding 
of God's word and able to apply it to your life, apply it to others, uh, be a greater witness than ever before. And again, having a sinful nature, living in the sinful world, facing the devil each and every day, it's imperative that we grow up uh, so that God's church uh, can grow too. Because uh, people are going to see this gospel just spreading throughout the world and they're going to know more about it. And we are the ones uh, who are growing up. So we look for the word living this week, and living is living stone. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in sight of God, chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stone, so connected to the living stone, who is Jesus, the living stone, the cornerstone, are being built up as a spiritual house, connected to Christ. To be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So cornerstones were carefully prepared and placed in ancient times, where they determined the direction of the exterior lines of the buildings. So to make sure it's kind of squared up, or the direction it's going to take place. Peter's concern was that those who came to Christ would mature into a holy priesthood. Now, priests are those who would pray on behalf of the people, who would offer sacrifices on behalf of the people, uh, but who were set apart um, for the uh, sharing of the word, sharing of the gospel. And so we might not look at it as in terms of pastoral office, you know, that's distinct, but we do talk about the priesthood of all believers. And so we are all a part of this priesthood by benefit of our faith in the Lord, and we all take part in serving the Lord um, and proclaiming the gospel, uh, praying for one another, encouraging uh, them in God's word, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable through, to God through Jesus Christ. We need to be living stones. So living again, key here, active, moving, properly aligned with the living Jesus who is Zion's, the church's cornerstone. So this growing up, this maturity, you know, connects us to Christ and his word, and we can live out our lives in him and be centered in him and proclaim his message, not our own. And therefore it's, you know, prospering, uh, it's strong, it's with able to withstand the, the enemies around us. Uh, so what added significance uh, can you see in the fact that it was Peter who was using this analogy of a building constructed of living stone? So why was it Peter that was important here writing? Well, what does Peter mean? Peter is Petros, and Peter means rock. Rock. His name means rock. It was a name given uh, that, God, that Jesus gave him. Um, so on this rock, this confession, I will build my church, uh, so Peter and rock are really important, and Peter is saying, you know, he is a living stone. Now notice, Peter isn't the cornerstone. He is another living stone within the building that God has constructed of all his believers, of the priesthood of believers. Peter understood this, and he was happy to be a part of the cornerstone. So what is the result of our being a spiritual house of living stones who trust in the cornerstone we will not be put to shame. You know, so as people talk about, well, you're wrong, or you don't know what you're talking about, or, you know, whatever question of our faith it may be, we rely on God's living and abiding word, which is written by the living word Jesus. We have this living hope, uh, and so we can never be put to shame uh, because it is the truth of salvation. It is the truth that God has given to us and that just solidifies even more so our relationship to God and um, our joy and, and willingness to share this message with others. We shouldn't hesitate or be afraid or worried uh, when it comes to doing so. Uh, so what is the cause of their rejection? So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined uh, to do. Um, so sadly, while this perfect uh, cornerstone has been laid in Jesus, 
um, the living word of God, um, and through his living and abiding word, there are those who reject it. Um, and we saw this why Jesus was crucified, uh, ultimately risen from the dead, because they just did not want to believe. Uh, they did not want to, you know, he's just a son of Mary and Joseph. They did not like the way that he conducted his ministry as a servant, um, and they considered him then a blasphemer of God. But we know that since Christ is risen, he is the promised Messiah, and they rejected uh, the wrong person. So the rejection of the gospel is what um, is the result of, of their unbelief. They reject the, what God has done for them in Jesus. And uh, we're going to face this rejection, too, as we go on in our lives. But we need to remain in the cornerstone so we're not discouraged and we continue to be built and want to share this message. And this is what first Peter, what Peter is right, reminding everyone in First Peter. So there are those who reject Jesus, and that's sad. But who are you? Who are you when you are connected to the cornerstone? And, and this was a National Youth Gathering theme a couple of years ago, and it still serves as a real blessing. So who are we then when we're built in the cornerstone? Living stones are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may do what? Proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is the gospel, isn't it? Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And mercy is key, uh, God's action for us. So what function does Peter point to that validates all of these titles in our lives as Christians? So how are we a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, uh, a people for his own possession? Uh, that we are chosen in grace, just as Christ was God's chosen one to save mankind, emphasizes that all of it is God's gracious plan of salvation. We are a part of the salvation narrative. Christ for us, received by God's grace through faith. We cannot boast this because God is the one who has done it. We can enjoy assurance and praise him for it. We can proclaim his excellencies. Uh, the titles that assure that God has moved into our lives with his gracious gift of salvation in Christ are validated when we live up to them. So, the, the royal priesthood, chosen race, holy nation, people of his own possession are people who are living stones. It's not just a matter of having the titles and, and being idle, but this is recognized, right? Uh, God's name lists, you know, in us by faith. We proclaim him. We're Christians. Uh, we're living out that priesthood in prayer and proclaiming the gospel and sharing with others. Uh, we are people who are living righteously, as we heard last time, a holy nation. A people who have received forgiveness, um, and, and we are God's own. Um, so this is what we want to do. Those who are called out must live out this life that we have been given, not just you know have the title, but let the titles be known um, as we live. Why must we say, once we were not a people, but now we are God's people? Once we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. For many of us, our ancestors were Gentiles who lived in spiritual darkness until the gospel of Jesus was brought to them by Christian missionaries. Uh, you know, we are all people who are brought into this relationship uh, by God's grace through faith. And uh, this, is a, this is a work of the Holy Spirit. So once we were not a people, once we were estranged from God, apart from God, but through the gospel we have been brought into fellowship with him. Jew and Gentile, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, there's neither slave nor free, but all are one in Christ Jesus. That's the work that he has done, that's the work that we have, and we celebrate uh, in our lives. So, uh, it's great, you know, this Peter, living stones, uh, our identity uh, that we have through, through Jesus, uh, built on the cornerstone that is Jesus, and, and knowing that built in him, uh, that we have that sure foundation and then as we grow you know in our faith uh receiving the gospel constantly we're building stronger and stronger to withstand the forces of evil that are out there and remain living in the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light so today living stones um we've had living hope 
living and abiding word of God, living righteously, and now living stones. I encourage you to read 1 Peter. It's a wonderful living epistle, and it's all about Christ who died and is living uh, forevermore. Uh, and we have received that living faith um, that helps us uh, to believe and to share God's word, uh, the gospel, with others. So thanks again for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, and until next time, uh, God bless your day.